Hey, what's up everybody? I'd like to welcome you to another Juice tutorial. And today what we're gonna do is a tutorial I've been actually meaning to do for a little while now, but uh, one of the members of our disc from our Discord chat, uh, Snoozo, can uh, kind of reminded me about it. So basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna return back to the synth tutorial that I did a couple tutorials back where we built a really basic synthesizer with the help of the Maximilian Sound Library. And so if, if you'd been following those tutorials, there was a little something that I warned you about in that the filter implementation uh, with the Maximilian library uh, will overload if you actually turn it too quick and, um, and that it'll basically cause the synth to crash. And so I've been meaning to do this tutorial where we actually replace that filter with an implementation from uh, the DSP module uh, from Juice, but I think that it can be a little bit confusing, uh, and the reason is uh, if we go to the code here, uh, just to read you, just to read you what Snozikin said first. It just says hi, uh, trying to implement a IIR filter with the synth, but can't find any examples of how to do it inside Synthesizer Voice, where I'm processing every block. So this brings up the issue of how it can be a little bit tricky to. Uh, think of how to implement this. So if you go, if, if you recall from our synthesizer tutorials, basically what we're, what we're doing is we have these, uh, we have a couple functions here. So we have get filter params where we're basically getting, um, getting parameter values from our dial changes for our filter frequency and filter cutoff. And then we're using those, uh, we're getting, we're getting those from our processor just, um, getting our raw parameter values here uh, from our processor tree. So I hope you're following along with what I'm saying. If, if not, you might want to go back and check the uh, tutorials on the synthesizer that I did earlier. But basically, we're just getting some values from our dials, and then we're, le we're, we're actually just relaying those back to synth voice via this method called get filter params. Okay, so I'm just taking these numbers that we're getting from our dials, and then I'm just relaying them back back here into this function, and then I'm passing them on to the actual filters here. So we have this filter, this low low res filter, this low pass filter, this high pass, band pass, and so on and so forth. And uh, and then that's getting processed, and then basically what we're doing is we're getting the output of that, and then we're routing that into our output buffer. So this brings up a tricky situation because the DSP module filter implementations need to happen within the plugin process or can't, we can't really implement it in synth voice. So how can we make that happen? Well, luckily it's quite simple to actually make that happen and I'm going to show you how to do it. Um, so the first thing that we're going to do is at the moment we have the signal coming, the, the synthesizer signal coming into our envelope and then it's going out of our envelope and then and then we're um, passing that into our filter so what we could do is we could just bypass this filter implementation that we have now and just route the envelope the the signal that's going into the envelope now it's coming out of the envelope and now we can just route that directly to the output okay and we could do that with this method called set envelope so as you can see, it's just returning a double. The double is just our output signal, okay? So, so, our synth, so our sine wave or saw wave or whatever wave we have is going into the envelope and then it's just coming out as a stream of numbers. And that's what we're going to put in here. So instead of set filter, it's going to be set envelope. And so I'm actually bypassing the filter here. And I can actually go and I can just like start deleting this uh, this filter stuff here and do it like this. So just get rid of all this because we don't don't actually need any of that anymore. Now if we go to the plugin processor just to save to save time I actually already did. A, uh, an implementation of the state variable filter. 
So as you can see here, we have the state variable filter implementation. Um, I've done a tutorial on, uh, on this extensively uh, a couple tutorials ago. So you can check how to do that. I don't want to waste time by just going through all of that again. So, um, so I've already kind of done it here before the tutorial. So we just have uh, the processor duplicators so that enables us to um, set the effect for to happen to both channels. Since we have two channels, we have to handle those individually. And the processor duplicator allows us to basically duplicate that, duplicate our process across all channels without having to do any sort of funny um, array setup with our process block. So then we go to the plugin processor. And then we just have all the stuff that we had already from the synthesizer. Um, this is just our audio processor value tree state, just getting our values from the envelope, from our filter, the filter type that we want, the filter cutoff, filter resonance. And then this is just all stuff that we need for to use the DSP module. Um, so we have the process spec, which gets all the information that we need, like the sample rate, how many, how much buffer size that we have for, um, <coughs> pardon me, how much buffer size we have, uh, the number, to the total number of channels that we're talking about. And then I'm just calling all the stuff that I went over in the state variable filter tutorial. Uh, we have to reset it when, before we're getting to play the, the track again to empty out any junk values. And then we need to basically pass on the the uh, metrics that we're getting from our sample rate, our buffer size, and our channels. Uh, we're passing that on to our DS to to our processor duplicator, and then we're updating the filter, which is a method that we wrote um, down here. And all this is doing is it's just basically selecting a low whether the uh, filter is low pass, high pass, band pass, and then just updating it and setting the cutoff frequency. So I've, I flew, I flew through that really quickly, but like I said, I have a tutorial just on that and that's the uh, state variable filter implementation. But the important thing that I want to kind of point your attention to is if you go down here, basically at the moment we have my synth, uh, render next block, and that goes out to the output right now. But what we need to do is we need to actually route this through our filter now. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do is we actually just need to update our, our filter settings. Okay, so we just need it to basically grab what type of filter that we're talking about and grab what our, um, what our filter frequency and our, our resonance is. Okay, and it's gonna be doing that at audio rate. So we can just say update filter like that and that's all we need to do there. Now what we need to do, since we're, de since we're dealing with the DSP module, basically we need to create an audio block. Okay, so it's DSP audio block. It's of type float. I'm just gonna call this block. So we're creating an audio block object. And then basically what we're doing is we're just, we're just basically passing the buffer onto, uh, so, so this is actually just pointing to the buffer. So as you can see, what's happening here is that basically I'm sending all of, I'm getting my output here. Um, I'm taking my uh, synth, my synth wave. Uh, let's just say it's a saw wave. And then I'm, I'm putting it into the buffer here. And now all I'm doing is I'm taking this object called block and I'm pointing to the buffer. The buffer's already got the synth, uh, the, the synth sound in there okay and now all we need to do is now we need to um, put it through the filter so what we could do is we could just say state variable filter um, process and then if you recall this is called uh, process context replacing so basically what what we're saying here is that we have this signal that's coming in uh, we're going to we're going to put it through our filtering process and then we're actually going to replace we're going to replace those values we're not actually like copying the values somewhere else or doing anything fancy like that we're just actually replacing 
Um, we're doing the we're doing the filtering, and then that's replacing the values that are going to be going into our output. Okay, so um, now here we have a float, and then what we're going to do is we're just passing our audio block into the into the process. So we're just taking our block and we're processing it with the filter and putting it out to our speakers. So let's just go ahead and compile that and see what happens. I'll just clean up some of this code while we're doing that. So, so far so good. Cool. So uh, if you're wondering, by the way, how it's already connected and everything, what you can do is after, if once you build one of these, then what you can do is you can actually just go to file, uh, save as, and you just basically save it as a name. And then every time you build after that, it's actually already hooked up. So you don't have to hook it up, uh, hook up all the wires again, like I've been doing for the last million tutorials. So, uh, so here's our, so here's our filter and, um, our synthesizer. So let's just see what happens here. So I'm just going to change this to a saw wave since we have some harmonics and a saw wave. And then, cool, so that sounds like that's working. And then I could just turn up the resonance, make sure the resonance is working. Okay, I'm sure that's pretty loud for you, so I don't want to do that too much. Uh, let's just try the high pass filter. That works, and band pass. So that works. So yeah, that's pretty simple tutorial there, real short one. But um, as I said, it is something that I've been asked about a couple times. And so I hope that you found that helpful. And, um, and that, that, um, that state variable filter is a lot more stable than the Maximilian implementation. So I hope you found that hor uh, horrible. <laughs> I hope you found it helpful. And uh, I'm gonna also put this on um, on my GitHub, so I'll put the link below just in case you want to pull from that, and uh, you'll be pulling from the tutorials branch as well. So um, yeah, uh, I will finish it here, and I will see you next time.